Hello, in this video I'm going to explain a well-known algorithm that will allow you to solve local motion planning problems, moving the robot safely around the environment while trying to reach a target configuration. The aims of this presentation are, on the one hand, to understand the fundamental characteristics of the vector field histogram algorithm and its variants, BFH plus and BFH star, and differentiate them. I will explain how to build primary, binary, and mask polar histograms from sensor data and also how to obtain candidate directions and to know how to choose the best one under a given criterion. Throughout the presentation, we will see that the algorithm contains an important set of parameters that we will have to tune properly to work, such as thresholds, value sizes, cost function weights, and the amount of prediction steps. Tuning these parameters is not that intuitive unless you know what you're doing, and it depends on the environment of the robot. The VFH or vector field histogram technique assumes that we can build a 2D occupancy map or a cell histogram that incorporates unreliable measurements from range sensors such as ultrasound or laser. If not, we can always use raw sensor data. The main idea is to reduce this map to a polar histogram based on a preliminary ideas known as virtual field force. Subsequently, valleys are detected in the polar histogram using a threshold, which means that those sectors that of the histogram that do not exist the, the threshold value are considered as free sectors. This threshold is a critical parameter in the algorithm and must be properly tuned. Once valleys have been found, which are nothing than a set of sectors below that threshold, the one that is closest to the target direction is selected, and within that valley, a direction to move according to the valley size is selected, distinguishing if it's a wide or a narrow valley. The VFH technique introduces some improvement over the previous technique, incorporating binary polar histogram, which uses two thresholds with high terraces, which improves the smoothness of the resulting motion planning. In addition to this, it also considers the robot size in order to build the primary polar histogram to avoid implementing a low-pass filter of that histogram. It also includes the concept of unreachable directions, considering that the robot has a limited turning radius due to the kinematic or dynamic constraint. Those directions cannot be reached if they have to go through directions that will collide with an object. Finally, it also improves the decision criterion of uh, selecting the, the correct uh, direction by, in, by incorporating a cost function that allows to define a behavior. And a couple of years later, the BFH star technique was introduced, which includes as main novelty the fact that it makes predictions uh, for n steps to build a tree and uses uh, the A star algorithm to compute an optimal route. The fundamental idea is that prior to making the decision of which is the best candidate direction to choose, the BFH star algorithm simulates those candidate directions and obtains new robot positions and reevaluates the VFH plus algorithm based on the, those new positions. After n steps, a tree is built with candidate directions and the A star algorithm allows us to choose the best one in one step, uh, let's say, uh, direction that minimizes the tree. So in order to uh, implement those techniques, we need a first step, which is basically uh, to build a cell histogram um, whose values uh, are updated based on the rain sensor measurements after several passes, and they will provide uh, somehow a certainty of the cell being occupied. This process can be uh, improved if we use occupancy uh, maps, which provides the likelihood of each cell of being occupied. The 2D cell histogram is converted into a polar histogram, that is a one-dimensional histogram. 
Uh, in this process, um, the size of the robot is taken into consideration, which avoids having you know, to use a low pass, uh, low pass filter to smooth the, pol the polar histogram. So for each cell, a magnitude is computed depending on the cell distance to the robot and its occupancy likelihood. And then the cell magnitudes are accumulated uh, on their corresponding polar sector. And the size of the sector is a fundamental parameter of the algorithm as well. Here we see some of the formulas used for building this polar histogram. As mentioned, we must first obtain the cell magnitude, which depends on the cell distance to the robot and uh, its likelihood of being occupied, and some parameters related with the active window size. Its cell has an associated influence region depending on the robot size, and we usually add even a safety distance uh, to this region, and this defines an angular region which is denoted uh, with a variable gamma, and determines if the cell magnitude are accumulated for a given sector k. The binary polar histogram uses two thresholds to determine which sectors are occupied and which of them are free. It transforms the accumulated values into ones or zeros depending on whether they are above or below these thresholds. Indeed, in case of being between the threshold, high thesis mechanism is used so that the previous value or the value that we had in the previous iteration is used. And the last histogram we need to build is the max histogram. This histogram takes into account the fact that the robot has some kinematic or dynamic constraints and therefore there's a minimum turning radius. This implies that if in order to reach a free sector or a sector that was classified as a free in the binary uh, histogram, if we need to, to reach, uh, in order to reach that sector, we must necessarily go through another sector that might be locked, then in that case, those sectors will be also blocked. And um, here I show uh, the binary histogram and the mass histograms. And as you can see, the red zone in the mass histogram are marked as forbidden directions because in order to reach those directions, the robot must necessarily pass through the orange uh, region. And because of the minimum radius, um, which is depicted in, uh, in the green circles in the figure, this cannot be possible without colliding. So once we have the mass histogram, we can detect the valleys, uh, which are basically a set of sectors marked as free sectors. And we made a distinction between what we uh, call narrow valleys and wide valleys. A uh, narrow valley represents a region in which the robot can pass through, but is surrounded by obstacles. And therefore there's only one possible direction, which is just basically pass through the middle of the valley. And on the other hand, we have a wide valley, which represents a region with obstacles far away from the robot. And in this case, we usually can take uh, the decision or the candidate decisions um, uh, to make are um, to move through the left or the right edges of the valley as candidate directions. Although it could happen also that the target direction is within the view, within the valley, and in that case, we also consider that that direction is also a candidate direction, obviously. And uh, among all possible directions, we, we must select the best one. And for, the, for that, um, this, uh, the VFH plus algorithm defined it, a cast function that we need to minima, minim, minimize and uh, consider, considering aspects such as target distance, robot orientation distance, and previous direction distance. The weights of these three criteria allow us to implement even, uh, different behaviors in the algorithm. The VFH plus algorithm uses a tree with candidate directions to determine the best direction to make based on a prediction. It builds a tree with n steps. Each node of the tree represents a robot position that the robot would reach in case of a taking or a given candidate direction. In addition to this, a discount factor is introduced so that future decisions have less influence than immediate decisions. 
In the figure on the left, it's shown how the algorithm results vary depending on the amount of prediction steps. So this is an important parameter of the algorithm. And on the other hand, the figure on the right shows the tree with all possible directions and the one that the algorithm A star has determined it to be the best route is depicted or highlighted in black. Obviously, if we are able to provide good predictions, the algorithm performance will be significantly better, avoiding to get trapped, as usually happens with pure local motion planning algorithms. In this video, I have explained algorithm based on the VFH method, vector field histogram method, used in motion planning um, techniques for uh, mobile robots equipped with brain sensors. Thank you very much.